am so excited to introduce you to just a kick-ass woman that is doing amazing work. Um, this is Kathleen Martinez. So she is the <laughs> real life L Woods and she spends each and every day empowering women, empowering immigrants and the underrepresented. And she is on a mission to unite families that's easily and efficiently in a way that you probably haven't heard of before. So Kathleen, thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Tell everyone what I missed. I'm yeah, sure well, I mean, I think our, uh, it's it's more of a team effort. My team has very much a mission, like individually. Every one of my team members has their own story, and we. But we, what we all have in common is really what we've experienced as like people in the legal profession. So the legal profession is a little old school, um, and we've all felt maybe out of place or like an outcast, and so. When I created my firm, my my mission was to employ people and make them feel welcome regardless of who they were, what they believe in, et cetera. How they look, appearance, obviously, was my biggest issue <laughs> and how I chose to dress. But um, I, what I cannot relate to with my employees is that, that they're all either first or second generation immigrants. I'm not. So um, with them, they, they all have crazy crazy stories um and they all personally relate to all of our clients and i think it just it's what makes us such a successful law firm is because you know unlike what i have been trained as as like a baby lawyer i actually tell them i'm like get personal with them <laughs> you know it's not, it's really not a nine to five thing with them i mean it's it's all the time i feel like we're family members with our clients and we really relate to our clients and i think that's what makes them you know really feel welcome but yeah I, we're a big we're a community we're definitely like a family at our firm and we like we like to empower each other and lift each other up so that's a huge obviously the biggest part of my firm biggest mission when it came to creating my firm as well yeah no kathleen thank you so much for sharing and i know we got a lot of stuff we're gonna dive into today i'm so thrilled for people to hear more about your story and i think you know first and foremost i'd love to know you know why you chose the type of law that you did especially in this day and age where let's be honest yeah. there's a lot of ignorance out there and there's a lot of pain and just for the nature of what you do yeah around, yeah and it's funny because i because i'm not a first or second generation immigrant a lot of people are like why immigration but I feel like immigration sort of found me. Um, I, you know, I, I dabbled in different areas of law. And then when I started doing family law right out of passing the bar exam, because it was the first job that I could get to pay my loans, um, I started helping a lot of my clients simultaneously with immigration because they asked me to, they trusted me. I was already doing like their custody and their divorce issues, et cetera. So when I started helping them with immigration, I realized that I really just, found it an interesting area of law, but specifically it was a client. So I started helping more and more immigrants and I really fell in love with immigrants as a whole in the community. I was like, these, these are the best type of clients you could ever have. I mean, they're so hardworking, so kind. They just sacrifice everything to be here. And they're so appreciative of being here, you know? Um, and a lot of us are so privileged that we don't understand what it's like to be here because we were born here, you know? I didn't earn my citizenship, but my clients do. They work really hard for it. So. Um, it's, it's, it, it kind of fell on my lap, but now I've made it my entire personality, obviously. Oh, oh, absolutely love it. And you know, Kathleen, you didn't start there. And I think that obviously what attracted me as one of, you know, your followers into your story and everything that you're doing is, you know, you didn't just wake up one day and say, this is what I'm going to do, right? You went into a very traditional, patriarchal, old yeah. school world for a while and God, it was really toxic. And so I'd love for you to share like what that life was like and what it kind of pushed you to create with the yeah, amazing so, place so that I you mean, created today. I'm 32. So I honestly was very naive about the legal world. I did not think that it was going to be as bad as it was when I when I entered it, you know, I mean, you just think the world has evolved, right? Um, you'd think it'd be a little bit more progressive. I went to law school in San Diego, and I interned in San Diego, it's a little bit more progressive over there. So my first internship was at a firm where my my teacher actually in law school warned me about she said it's kind of a boys club. And I was so naive. I was like, 
whatever. I'm just interning. So then I, I joined the firm for the summer and it's me and two other law students from my school and all three of us are women, right? So the, full, the firm was entirely segregated by gender, meaning all of the attorneys were men and they each had their own receptionist who was like a 20 to 23 year old girl. <laughs> the girls were dressed a very specific way. They had a dress code that was in no way legal. <laughs> and um, the, I wouldn't even, like the attorney that I worked for. So basically my job as an intern, I was not definitely in the middle. I was not learning how to become a lawyer. I was like a receptionist. And um, that's not what I paid, signed up for. So, you know, I wanted an externship. I wanted to learn how to practice law, right? So I was basically told to like basic stuff, like get coffee, you know? And that's not what I signed up for. So um, I remember uh, it was on Fridays, all of the lawyers went to lunch and all the receptionists stayed at the office. And that's just what they did. That was their culture. And I remember as, a, as an intern, me and the two other interns who were women, law students, were like, where do we go? So we, you know, thought that we'd go with the attorneys because that's who we were working under. And they're like, oh, no, you stay at the office with the woman. Like, that, that's actually how they address it. <laughs> and then it was like, this is not happening. <laughs> and I mean, I couldn't believe that. And I just, you know, and, and I could tell that like the, you know, the receptionist and they wanted to keep the job so that they, I felt like they felt uncomfortable with the whole firm and the culture, but they didn't want to say anything, you know? And so everyone was silent about it. And me with my big mouth, I said something immediately that I was like, I feel like this is sort of illegal. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, and I totally like went up to the partner afterwards. I'm like, I cannot, I mean, good God, it was like 2017. And I was like, I can't believe that this is actually happening. Like, are you okay with this kind of firm culture? And he fired me the next day. And so I never came back. I was super happy about it, but I felt bad because my, you know, I know friends who ended up working there experiencing the same thing, leaving the firm. And I just could not believe, it was like something out of Mad Men, you know what I mean? Um, so that was my very first experience. And I was like, okay, so maybe I don't go into insurance defense. <laughs> I'm like, maybe it's just that firm, you know what I mean? So then I, I get licensed and I work for an oil company, which is like, probably shouldn't have done that either in Texas, but it was like a job, you know what I mean? And I wasn't licensed yet. I was studying for the bar. So they offered me like a well-paying job with benefits while I was studying for the bar. It was in San Antonio. And then I start working, you know, I work for this guy who had taken the bar a few times. Okay. So for context, he was a little bit threatened about someone else taking his job. He was great to me until the day I passed the bar exam. The day I passed the bar exam, he starts just acting really strange. I mean, and really micromanaging my work. And I know I was doing good work. And then eventually he started making comments to me about my appearance and what I was wearing. Um, and then, you know, he would go to the boss about it, the owner and the owner wasn't really involved. And I remember the owner telling me, he was like, you know, it feels like you don't fit in with the culture. People are uncomfortable with you. And I was like, I know exactly who's uncomfortable with me. And it's because I'm smarter than him and I'm better at him than his job, you know? And he was, but this guy had been working for him for like 10 years. So he wasn't going to like lose him over me. So that's when I was like, okay, so obviously this is not a good fit for me. Um, and so that was kind of like my experience. And then, you know, I worked for another firm that was kind of similar to that. And eventually I was like, I, I, apparently I have to do this on my own, you know what I mean? And, I, and I'm not alone in this. I know that my experience is not uncommon that a lot of female attorneys start their own firms because they, they get, you know, they basically get like singled out. Um, they don't become partner. They, they have children. They're treated differently as mothers because they need time off. They're totally discriminated against because of lifestyle and family work-life balance. So I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I was like, I can't do it. I got to start my own firm. But what my mission with my starting my firm is I was like, I'm never going to make any one of my employees feel that way, regardless of how, you know, hard the work is and how much pressure we have, et cetera. Oh, no, thank you so much for the share. And, you, you know, I think you mentioned something that's very important. I just want to make sure everyone that's listening caught it. Yeah, this was not 30 years ago. <laughs> I mean, this was shit. I mean, this is. Yeah, like know, what, less seven, seven years, years ago? ago? I you mean, know, this is happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, in my own personal experience, went through so much of the exact same thing throughout multiple industries. Was literally told more than once the board's right. coming in, so look sexy. Right. Or any time that, that, you know, you, you had an opinion or you yeah. or God forbid, used your brain. Right. They would attack character. And I find that 
your story and so many women's stories is similar that they yeah. did go after how you yeah, like. Yeah, I just felt like they felt uncomfortable with my presence. And it really wasn't about how I dress. You know what I mean? I think that was an excuse for them to be less threatened by me. And I felt, and I wasn't the only woman who was doing that to, you know, in, in the industry, in the firm within itself. Like I felt like they just didn't want someone as young coming in, taking their job, who was so clearly not afraid of like anything else. I mean, I just, I wasn't about to be told what to do and how to wear in order to be good for my clients. Like as a lawyer, you know, all you care about is your clients. Like my, my clients liked me. They trusted me. I could care less what my manager thinks. You know what I mean? It was just, it was this bizarre, toxic culture. And I, and you know, it's, it's not limited to the legal field. I hear stories every single day from men and women who experience this kind of treatment in toxic corporate culture, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. No, and Kathleen, I think that, you know, you obviously lived this, right? And you, you went through it, you went out there, you put your flag down, you built, you know, everything that you built today. And a lot of people look at success, you know, they're having their life and they assume that it's easy, right? And they assume like, oh, mm -hmm. well, you know, of course they were able to do that. But I would love for you to talk about like the courage that that took, like to be unapologetically you and then to embrace like, everything that makes you different, you just empower it. You set that on fire. Thank you. And that's I appreciate it. I mean, I think it's for a lot of people in general, it's really about who you surround yourself with, like the right kind of mentor, obviously having people in a similar situation where, um, you know, my, my husband's an immigrant himself. He was the one who was like, you can do it. You can start this firm. And he's like, you know, I mean, he really encouraged me, but also I have good mentors. And so I had a few female attorneys who have been through the same thing that I did. And now I have a lot more because I've shared my story who have encouraged me like, Hey, this is how you start your own firm. This is how you do it. These are resources. I have a group text with a few immigration attorneys now who I just like complain to and vent to. And I ask for advice from when it comes to owning a business and all the things that you don't learn in law school, like marketing, accounting, hiring, managing, all of that. Um, and yeah, and I think we're having the right people, to really encourage you is so important. And I, I try to offer that to other people in law school and other lawyers, because I felt like even though I had a few of those, there, it wasn't an obvious resource for me. So I'm like, you know, I want to I want to provide that for other people, specifically my employees who I know want, some of them want to become lawyers. And I'm like, like, you know, tell me what I need to do, because I know that you won't have that in law school. I know it's cutting edge. I know it's very competitive. And I know that people will be threatened by you. Thus, they will treat you like crap. <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure that's kind of what you experience as well, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I think women everywhere, if you, and I hate to even say this word out loud, but if you don't follow a non-traditional path as a woman, so anything outside of a, a white picket fence, this whole concept of having to invest and find other people on your same path, like I think we're all... For yeah. women for a long time we struggled with that because you're like wait a minute so i'm not you know you know the the unsung heroes which i think are the stay-at-home mothers right. like there's no way in hell i could ever do that job but anything that's outside of that as a woman right especially in a, in a field like law a field that you know in stem or anything like that that's traditionally male dominated you don't have the world yeah. supporting oh my you up no it's just no, not no, still, i mean still so i mean the the dms that i get are so concerning and disheartening because I get a lot of like, um, you know, I get a lot of messages from women who are like, this is what I'm experiencing. Are you hiring? Or they're like, I'm not even, ex I don't even know how to practice law, but how can I work for you? Because this is what I'm experiencing from my boss. I'm like, my God, you know, you would think it would it gets better, but I feel like I, you know, we are, we are only a few women who are really like outspoken about it, <laughs> about what we went through. And some people are like, oh, you're just a victim. I'm like, no, because I know that what I went through was bad, but I made something out of it. And now I get to help all these people become citizens. Like, what are you doing with your experience? You know what I mean? And this way we can employ other people who have been through the same situation. And so, I mean, I think, I think it's really important to at least like, you know, I guess design an objective out of your unfortunate experience as well yeah and, and you notice like when when they said oh you're a victim, oh, right. right they're going straight for character again because they don't they can't yeah. argue with you with fact right and it's actually the opposite of being a victim like you sharing your story even myself like i'm a baby entrepreneur less than a year old and when i first started following you and like watching that and hearing your story 
even for myself, it's like, well, hell yeah, I can do this. Like finally someone sharing yeah. the real, the raw, the messy. Yeah. And that's what I mean, we all need. And it's, it's just not, it's not enough in my opinion. I feel like not enough women are really talking about their experiences and I'm so privileged in that I don't, you know, I have a lot of privilege in my life and I have this one unfortunate experience, but then I look at my employees who have so, who have suffered so much more than me, who have so many more obstacles, especially as like immigrants. I mean, and, and I'm starting to tell their stories on TikTok, which is really cool, but like people don't understand what other people go, go through, I guess, to get to where they are until they tell their story. You know what I mean? I mean, like I, I read my employee stories and I, when they apply to work for me and I'm like, I can't believe what, they had to go through. I mean, I think about what I had to go through and it's just absolutely nothing <laughs> compared to them and my clients and my followers. And I just wish if more people told their stories so that we can relate and like build this community of support a little bit more. Oh, absolutely. And that's, you know, exactly what you're doing. And I think using your privilege for good, using your platforms and, and being able to get that out there. But, you know, speaking of like, as cliche as it may sound, making the world a better place, you know, that's exactly what we do, you know, at Power with what I'm, you know, trying to, to kick off and get off the ground is like, you don't have to feel alone. You, do, you don't have to feel like you're at this by yourself. And there is a sea of women out there that we can come together and support each other and it's by hey here's how I really screwed up or here's an obstacle that you know I, I faced and then hearing from each other's stories right and you're yeah. doing just that I mean it's crazy that. and that's that's primarily what I you know like what I deal with with my clients like I have like maybe eight to ten consultations a day and then I hear what they're going through and at first it would just absolutely shock me and unfortunately now it doesn't because I know what immigrants go through. And I, I, I primarily started my platform on TikTok to be able to tell their stories so that people understood who immigrants are, why they come here and their intentions. And so that we can, you know, we can help them, support them, judge them less, um, understand why immigration is so crucial, so important. So like, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I believe that if more people told their story on social media, especially lawyers, when it comes to what their clients are going through i feel like obviously i mean this is the world would be a better place right <laughs> oh, oh a thousand percent yeah you're, you're certainly preaching to the choir there with me um you know i definitely want to to cover you know as far as how everything that you've done everything that you've built hearing all the stories the culture that you've built in your company today is very prevalent, right? And guys, this you can't curate that. This is not something she's done for just like through this authentic and you can feel it just in the content. How have you done that and what keeps you like really yeah. aligned to your yeah. so I mean it's funny because I, I you know I originally just hired people because I'm you know I want so I look for a few things in my employees. I look for them to relate to my clients. I like when they have some immigration experience obviously the basic stuff like experience, um, you know, Spanish fluency, et cetera. But I, you know, about from a photo when we all wore pink, we all like pink and it, that was just it. We just all have like pink. And then it blew up and people were like, what does this mean? And I guess what I, what our firm has done collectively is a sign. It's not, it's, it's not just a color. It's not just an aesthetic. We're not just trying to look a certain way. It means that I, could care less about the patriarchy and that and about how a law firm should look like. I mean, we, we have a good, you know, we're very good at what we do. My paralegals are incredibly talented, my legal assistants, all of them. And I think it attracted the right type of employee. So now we get messages and requests um, from people who want to work for us because they like what we stand for. They like that we advocate for, you know, for, for women, for men, for people who have been you felt less than because of who they are, for outcasts, for immigrants. And so I think they feel like we would, we feel, we make it safe for them in a work corporate environment. So, I mean, I get encouraged by that every day because I get comments and messages that are mostly nice about what we do. They're like, thank you so much for telling your story. It relates to me or telling your employee stories. And now my employees are relating to my followers. Now my employees are relating to my clients. Sometimes I tell like anonymously some about, about sometimes I talk about my cases a little bit and about my clients and what they went through and how they were able to achieve status. And I think my followers and my clients and my employees really, um, they really like help me keep 
our purpose. So now our firm has so much more meaning. We're not just helping immigrants, but we're also helping women um, and people who have been made to feel less than because of who they are. My, I have a, um, today I have my, my billing specialist told her story today and she is the, I mean, you have to see it on Instagram. I don't think I could tell it for her, but I'll definitely post about it because I, I was crying when she told me her story. I mean, it was just an email too, because she, you know, and it's just crazy. You, you don't know what people go through until they say it, until they tell your story. So I'm always like, tell your story. There are more than one people, you know, there's always people who can relate to your story or can feel empowered or can feel safe. So the whole point of our, of our firm and all my employees is like, let's help people, let's help immigrants. Also, let's employ them and make them feel safe as well. Oh, I love that. Love, love, love. I mean, that in itself is just completely amazing. I love what you said about the pink wasn't just a marketing ploy. It wasn't just something right. that, like, this is who we are, right? And that's why it was magnetized. That's why so you did attract the right employees. And now, like, you're a human being. You have, so you can't be on 100%, right? As the CEO of your own organization, you have a so many people around you that are like, no, we believe in you and we're carrying this. Yeah. It's like they're creating. Yeah, this yeah and they, they really are. I mean, they, they make me a, a better oh. leader. And like, as, and as, as especially as a leader and a law firm owner, you know, you, you want to know how to lead. You want to know how to, and, you know, because it's a hard job. I mean, my, my employees work crazy hours. It's 24 seven. I know how hard they work. So I'm, they definitely encourage me on how to be a better leader for them, not just a boss. So um, and I think that, I think our clients can see that they can tell that we all support each other. It's not a toxic environment. You know, it's not, no one's a narcissist. <laughs> um, and that we're all, you know, they're kind people. Obviously that's my number one quality in, in any kind of employee that I hire. I'm like, you need to be kind, you need to be passionate about immigration. This needs to be your thing. It cannot be about the money or it's not going to work because it's way too hard, <laughs> way too difficult. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know, taking no, the dollar. No, that, that won't last no, too long. And, and, and if, if people do it for the money, it's just the wrong area of law. <laughs> but it's also just like not going to work because it's <laughs> it's 24-7. I mean, I, I'm texting my clients at like 4 in the morning, and I know my employees are too, you know, and I and they can't help it. They just want to help people that badly, so it's not like a 9-to-5 thing ever. But it's, it's a good thing because, you know, obviously it sounds cliche, but if you enjoy what you do, you don't really feel like – overworked you know it's not toxic to me and it definitely does not feel like work oh yeah and that's why this whole idea you know work-life balance all the rage you know it's like well no i mean that's for each individual right and when you truly love it you do work if you want to work seven days i know yeah right yeah yeah right? a lot of people like, are like you, no it needs but... to be you need to have a nine to five you need to have time for this you need to have time for that but i think it depends on the person Right. So, I mean, like I, I have children, obviously I struggle with my work life balance all the time, but, but I'm not going to work thinking that I'm like, this is such a drag. I don't want to be here. I, I love working. So <laughs> I love what I do and I incorporate my children with it. And, you know, they come with me on work trips and, you know, you, you figure it out, but I don't, I don't know anyone who has perfect work life balance. Like, good luck. Good luck with that. <laughs> I can't relate to that. No. <laughs> when yeah, they find a way to can that and sell it, we'll be the first in line for sure. <laughs> oh, no, well, Kathleen, you know, so many folks with Pal Her and then myself, you know, surviving the 16 years in corporate and then finding a way to really turn the whole boys club in my favor and play the game in, in a way that was authentic to me and authentic to my values and actually be successful doing it. A lot of these women mm -hmm. struggle with confidence. What advice? would you have um, from, you know, doing everything that you're doing and having, you're forced to be confident every day. You're essentially on stage every day when you're running an organization. Yeah, you know, what I was actually advised by a mentor of mine when I was struggling with confidence and applying to law school. And she told me like, no one will ever like give you confidence. So not grades, not the law school you got to go to, not your boss, not the firm you work at, not the person you're dating, not the family you're born into. And she was like, you have to just like fake it until you make it. And I remember thinking that's so stupid, but it's so true. Like you just have to manifest your own confidence. You have to decide that you're good enough, you know? I mean, and I had my own struggles academically when I didn't think that I could get into law school. And then when she told me that, I just decided I could. And I got a good LSAT score, got a good grind, and I got to law school. And I was like, all right, I'm here. Like, I'm finally here. And when I got into law school, I was like, 
you know, that's when I was like, oh my God, I, I can be a lawyer now. Like I am not a normal human being. I can help so many people now. <laughs> and, and I just, I think I manifested my own <laughs> success in that way where I was like, this is who I'm going to be. And this is who I'm going to help. And this is how I'm going to do it. And I'm not going to let anyone like determine exactly what like caliber I'm ever going to be in as a person, as a woman, as a girlfriend, as a wife, as a daughter, whatever, as an employee, you know what I mean? Um, and I feel like too many women uh, in general who come to me, they're like, you know, I just got broken up with and now I don't have confidence for anything else. So I'm like, by some 20 year old dude, like, why are you letting that person determine if you can be a doctor? You know what I mean? I mean, that doesn't even logically add up to me. So, I mean, I think if you literally just fake it and manifest it and also have the right mentorship, like, don't let anyone else decide that you're going to be good at life or be talented or be successful. It has to come from yourself. You have to just fake it until you make it. <laughs> oh, I, I couldn't agree more. And you said, you know, a few key things is don't worry about yeah. what society says you should be. This that you said, this is what I want to do. This is why I'm going to do it. And then just like full force blinders on run as fast as you can. And you, you're going to fail. You're going to mess it up. Because you're going to do something amazing. Yeah, I mean, I've heard crazy stories from people in my dance who are like, I got into law school at 40 after, you know, not getting in for, you know, three different times after failing out of high school because I had learning disorders because I went through a divorce. And it's just not the cookie cutter way of becoming a lawyer. But I was like, you still became a lawyer. You still pass the bar. And that's all that matters. Now you can help people. That's what your clients care about. Like your clients don't care about like, what law school you went to and exactly who you're friends with, who you dated, what family you're born into. They care about if you can help them or not. You know what I mean? And that's, that's up to you. And when you're in your deathbed, I always use this logic and my husband is going to kill me because I always use this, but I'm like, what are you going to care about this? You know, or are you going to care about like the impact you made on other people's lives? How many people you helped, how you used your privilege as a lawyer. So I think manifesting is so, so important and not ever letting anyone determine like how successful you're going to be is cheesy as that sounds. <laughs> no, it's not cheesy at all, Lee. We are uh, definitely, I wish I was, could beam myself over from Miami to Texas and hang out with right. me because I think we could talk for hours. But as we're winding down, where can people go to learn more about well, you my, and follow I mean, my Instagram, everything? my TikTok, I post like the same stuff. I'm doing a lot more Instagram stories. Um, and I'm just attorney Mart Martinez on both. So Instagram and TikTok. All day. I'm, all, I'm always on it. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, everyone, I thank you so much for hanging out with us today, learning about this powerful, badass woman story. Thank you for sharing, Kathleen. And anyone that wants to learn more about Pal Hurt, same thing. You know, follow me here. I definitely uh, trying out the TikTok game as well. And we cannot wait to join you again next week for another episode on thank Power you. Live. So, bye everyone.